Welcome to Yes, We're Here. Meredith Morocco is alongside Sean Clancy, the owner of Foley's New York, the best baseball bar in New York City. Sean, how are you holding up through all this? Uh, I'm good, Meredith. I can't complain. I mean, to be honest, all my family, everybody's well, all my staff are well. Uh, so, you know, I'm like everybody else. We're just writing this out, waiting to see where it's going to go. How do you manage the staff and how do you go about wondering when you could possibly reopen? From the staff point of view, when, when they decided to close the city, I, I've always had a view, my, my staff are like my family, so I've always had the view that I'm never going to put them in harm's way. So when they closed the city, I closed police. I wasn't going to have them risk getting on a train or a bus, you know, for takeaway or delivery for the sake of a couple of dollars. I'm like, we're closed. So basically my whole goal for the last eight weeks has just been make, making sure that they're well, you know, staying in touch with them. And more, most importantly, keep, I, I've consider, continued to pay the staff the whole eight weeks because I want it to be fair to them. Uh, and that's been my only goal because, you know, we can't, we can't worry about, I, 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 my life, I live by the rule that I don't worry about things I don't control. So I don't worry about anything until they tell me what they got to do. I mean, there's a lot, it's scary, the, the kind of stuff that we may have to do in order to reopen, but that's for another day until Cuomo and Blasio, uh, the Blasio say, hey, it's ready, it's time to open. I've, just, I've told my guys, enjoy the time with your families, do what you can, and don't worry about anything. We'll take care of police when the time is right. You had mentioned that you like it to be a family atmosphere, and that's what it is when you walk in the door at Foley's. It feels like you're almost home. Everybody's very friendly. Why is that so important that you created a family atmosphere like that in New York City, not just with the staff, but the patrons that come in as well? I mean, that's, to be honest with you, if you, if you take what, you know, I mean, the Irish are known for their hospitality, and that's what basically what it is, just to make people feel welcome. And, you know, that was my goal long before I ever wanted to be a baseball bar. Wanted it to be, you know, an Irish bar. And people say, what, you know, what's an Irish You know, you stop people on the street and ask them what an Irish bar is, they're going to tell you, oh, it's friendly people, it's good food, it's, it's a warm environment. And that's what I wanted to do. And basically, the baseball part of that just, I mean, and, you know, you're on the road for six months of the year. And, you know, it's nice when you can go somewhere, you have your places to go to. And I, I kind of wanted to make Foley's that place where if, if, for example, you or one of the clubbies or one of the PR guys, they don't want to sit in their hotel room, they don't want to go to, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings, whatever it is, there's somewhere they can come where they know the people, where they can sit and relax and feel like they're not on the road. When did the baseball aspect come into it for you? Because you didn't grow up watching baseball. It wasn't until you were bartending in New York City that you even started watching the game a little bit. How did you fall in love with the sport of baseball? Well, to take it back, you're right. Obviously, I grew up in Ireland where, you know, we didn't have any baseball. And, you know, I've had a chance to tell him the story, but I got a Reggie Jackson T-shirt when I was seven. And I was convinced he was one of the Jackson Five. My parents were married here. My father worked in two very, very famous establishments. He worked in Touch Shores and he worked in the Rim Room. And when in Touch Shores, we had a lot of famous people who came in. And he was, he took care of, um, he took care of all the baseball players because the biggest reason why was, he didn't like baseball, so he wouldn't be bothering Mickey Mantle or Joe DiMaggio or Yogi Berra. And, you know, it's funny, Mickey Mantle gave my father a jersey and my father gave it away. He's like, I didn't want a jersey that he'd worn and signed. It was no use to me. So, so I knew about baseball and I read about baseball and I would get, you know, people would come home every summer and I would have, I was re I had a Don Mattingly club and I couldn't pick Don Mattingly out of the lineup. So I knew about, I knew, I would read as much as I could about the game. Uh, I was a ferocious reader and I read as, as much, but, uh, yeah, it wasn't until I came here. I came here for good in 1991, September 1st, 1991. And I, I went, the first place I went was Yankee Stadium. And I, to this day, I can still remember how I felt when I walked up, granted I was in the upper deck, and I walked up and I walked out on the first time I ever saw that field. And every year until they closed old Yankee Stadium, that first time you went for opening day, when you walked up, I mean, the chills, I mean, this is, it, it, it was a cathedral. Now, you have over 3,000 signed baseballs from all kinds of different people. 4,000 now signed baseballs of all different types of people, whether they play for the Yankees, Mets, or another team, umpires, everything. How did you start that memorabilia collection, and how long did it take you to accumulate all the stuff? Um, actually, the funny thing is, when I opened, when I walked through the doors of Foley's, uh, I had five baseballs people had given me. And actually the first baseball I ever got uh, was Joe McEwing. 
And uh, he act actually isn't even signed to me, it's signed to my son, Ryan. And every now and then Ryan will ask me, you know, when, when will I get the baseball, when will I get a baseball back? And I'm like, well, you can have it in the other 4,000 in a couple of years. But uh, why I decided on baseballs was, as I started to meet different people and the collection started to grow, I realized space was going to be an issue. And I wanted to do something that was a little uniform, uniform in one sense. And also, um, like, for example, Pat Lafontaine, the Islander, mm -hmm. um, one of the, by the way, one of the, the nicest men I have ever met. And, I mean, I know they say hockey players are nicer. If I have to, I mean, but there's a lot of famous people who come through Foley's and I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of them. No nicer man than that guy, but, I, you know, he said, why are you having me sign a, a baseball? And I said, Pat, how many hockey pucks have you signed in your life? And he said, tens of thousands at this stage. He said, how many baseballs have you signed? He said, two. But that's why everybody and are you and they all take up the same space. So it, mm -hmm. you know, but I can put fifteen baseballs in the size of one football. Now, while they're all special in their own way, I'm sure, is there one signature that you really cherish, one baseball that you say that's that's the one I'm grabbing if I ever leave? You know the funny thing is I get asked that question and an awful lot of people say, Oh, you know, you have to have a favorite piece and you know, um, now I do have a baseball signed by Pope John Paul II. Wow. Now he's a bona fide. He's a he's an actual saint. The one I might grab is I do have one signed by my kids. I look forward to the time when we can get back to Foley's. Uh, before I let you go, was there one person that walked through the door that even shocked you? Because I know you have a lot of athletes and celebrities coming in there. One from a baseball point of view was David Wright, because his first night in New York, he came to Foley's, and David and I, and I mean one of the greatest nights we had was his last night in New York, and probably for for all the ladies out there, the second one was John Hamm. And John and I have become, I won't say good friends, but kind of, you know, we, he comes to see me when he's in New York and he's a, he's a good dude. And I like, I like to, I'm probably the only guy who makes fun of him, but you know, I'd never seen an episode of Mad Men before I met him. I've now binge watching Mad Men to try and catch up. But you know, I mean, just, I mean, there's so many, I mean, I remember that I was gobsmacked the first time I got to meet you, Meredith, after the writers <laughs> many, many years ago. Oh yeah, that was probably what, six, seven years ago now. You know. Crazy. Well, Sean, thank you so much for joining us on Yes, We're Here and hope you and everyone in your life remain safe and healthy. And we are hoping we can get back to Foley soon. I hear you. I look forward to it. Take care.